I recommend Sutera to not only growers and colleagues here in the Central Valley of California, but to other growers across the world. They offer top quality products to help you grow and sustain a healthy crop. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine reporting to you here with Jesse Roseman from the Almond Board of California, a principal analyst there. Wanted to uh, talk today, we're in a walnut orchard actually because we had a, a groundwater recharge workshop here in Chowchilla. Jesse was one of the speakers uh, talking about groundwater recharge and, and you know, on farm and how, the, how that impacts uh, almonds and the potential, right? Because we're, we're in this severe drought and we're trying to find solutions of ways we can put water back into the ground so that we can have the water we need for the future. And so I wanted to talk with you first and foremost. There's a, there's a lot of growers out there I think are apprehensive to the idea of flooding their orchards during the wet seasons. How does it really impact the orchard? Sure. Well, trees are essentially growers' babies, so they're going to do everything they can to take care of them, and they're also their future. This is a long-term, 25-year crop, potentially. So when the opportunity came to study the potential impact of recharge and over-applying water to almond trees, we saw, first of all, uh, a concern naturally, if you're over applying water, but then also an opportunity because of the scale of almond orchards, we know we need to apply a lot of water in a short period of time. So if we could spread that water out on orchards safely, it would actually be a, a really good solution for groundwater recharge, really uh, Central Valley wide. So we studied it and looked at three different orchards and the results came back and we did not see any negative effects to doing groundwater recharge on dormant almond orchards. So in the dormant period, it's, it's pretty safe going. Um, as far as the age of the trees, you know, does that have an impact too? I'm, I'm sure growers might be concerned about maybe some of those big ones falling down later in the season as a result. I don't know, you know. Sure. Every grower is going to want to take a uh, hard look at this and see how it fits with their operation. So different soil types, different soil structures, different ages of trees, you might have different concerns. So if you've got a lot of windfall in your orchard, um, a, more water and, and there's a lot of wind may not be a good fit, but I think given the fact that we are in these uh, times of plenty when we get floods and then times like this of drought, uh, it may be worthwhile to help with your long-term groundwater sustainability by doing groundwater recharge and making that decision to help keep groundwater levels up and recharging aquifers. Right, and you know, some, some growers have bigger berms in you know, orchards and that might be more beneficial potentially, right? Sure, I think we're really at the, the beginning of learning about on-farm recharge in orchards. So I think uh, growers typically are always experimenting, seeing what fits with their operations. So they're gonna try things out. One of the recommendations that we have is to, if, especially if you have any of those types of concerns, just try it in a small portion of your orchard or try it in one field and not every field, and then compare. Um, how are my trees doing here and how are they doing over here? And if it's safe, maybe you'll expand that in the future to a larger part of your orchard. Yeah, you might say the same thing to, uh, you know, another sustainability measure growers are trying to 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 facilitate in their orchards is, is cover crops in the winter. And that's another thing that's, you know, growing in the winter that we're, that, you know, another priority. Uh, and there might be concerns for how that might impact. I guess it depends on the cover crop and and whatnot, but what would you say? So I, th I think people are looking at really creative solutions to that. You can actually use uh, alternating rows to do recharge, and you might use every other row to grow a cover crop. So then you would ha maybe have, you know, your pollinators and your groundwater recharge. So that would be a good thing as well. So there's room for both. That's great. <laughs> for sure, if, especially if you, if you want to just Think through how your operation works and what your what you want. Are you looking to build your soil with cover crops? Are, do you have an opportunity with your district where they're offering water to do recharge? 
then that are there incentives available for cover crops or for groundwater recharge? I think all those things are going to be a part of the calculation on how you want to manage your, your operation. Yeah, that in mind, you mentioned you have a, a, a special guide the Almond Board just released, right? So we finished this groundwater recharge guide. It was a multi-year process. We had to do the research, and then we always take the research and then make it actionable. And we have our field outreach team. And now we're out here in these grower workshops sharing what we studied and learned that growers have an opportunity to take their water future and groundwater in particular and sustainability in their own hands by doing groundwater recharge. And the guide really walks growers through that by just four questions. Do you have surface water? Do you have the right soils? What types of recharge are available? And then uh, what changes do I need to make depending on what that recharge is? So with that in hand, I think growers will be more receptive. They'll have a chance to learn more about recharge. And then when the irrigation district comes and says, in a year of plenty, when we've got flood water and we need all of the acres on hand to recharge aquifers, a grower will know that recharge is safe in the dormant season in an almond orchard and that they can accept that water and help recharge their aquifer and build long-term water sustainability. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jesse. We're grateful to have this guide. And you're right, we can't we can't just rely on our legislators and their speed at creating, uh, raising dams or doing water infrastructural changes. As we know that even if we can accomplish that, it's going to take quite some time. So this is one thing that we can do that's in our power. So I really appreciate you taking the time. Read more about these things in our publications. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.